Welcome back, knuckleheads. I am Lupine Fiasco, and this is your daily fab gameplay. For anyone who's new to the channel, welcome to the jungle. What we do here is review replays of games that I played on the Talishar client days or weeks ago, after enough time has passed that I lose my bias and can more objectively judge the quality of my play. I will talk through turn cycles and give my thoughts on the line I would take now compared to the line I took then at the time of recording. We either learn from my mistakes or reinforce good play patterns with the overall goal of tightening and optimizing our gameplay in the future to take down paper events and, most importantly, walk away with that shiny, shiny cardboard. If you'd like to check out the list I'm playing here or try it for yourself on Talishar, there is a Fabry deck link in the video description below. While you're down there, if you've not already done so, please consider subscribing to my channel. A YouTube subscription is the best free way to support me and to make sure that you see daily fab gameplay in your video feed five days a week. The best paid way to support me is through Patreon, and a Patreon link is also in the video description. A Patreon subscription will get you access to the DFG Discord. At higher tiers, your name will appear in every DFG video. You'll get bonus DFG content every week, and there are even more benefits coming down the pipeline. Daily Fab gameplay will always be free five days a week, so for those who can afford to patronize me, I truly appreciate it. Now, let's talk about our sideboard and about our game plan. Having won the die roll, we will choose to go second. There is a chance that we take a bunch of damage from some sort of double, triple intimidate line on Reinar's first turn, but it is unlikely that we take too much damage or so much damage that it is significant and we get the opportunity to take tempo back um, on our first turn of the game. If Reinar does not present any sort of big intimidate, then we uh, get to just block on turn zero, which is nice. This is an older version of my list. We are playing Heart and Cross Trap. I will also say that playing Heart and Cross Trap here was a mistake. And I had not properly updated my sideboard guide and did not catch it in time here. I think Tunic is just correct into every hero, but into Brute, it is especially good. Uh, games go long enough that you are going to get multiple Tunic activations, and it pairs very well with our multiple Wild Rides and Pulpings as off of a two-card hand, you get to pitch a blue, play a wild ride, use your tunic, and claw for three. Uh, as far as what cards we are leaving in the sideboard, again, older list. Humble does not do much to Reinar. We are an aggro deck. We aren't trying to block too much anyway, so Reinar intimidating cards out of our hand up until we get to a point where that is lethal damage, doesn't matter. We want to keep those cards anyway, so even if we can't block with them, that's fine because we weren't going to do so anyway. Savage Beatdown is a neat card that lets us go over the top of very defensive heroes. Reinar is not a very defensive hero. He's more defensive than Ko is, but he is still trying to keep multiple cards in hand to do Blood Rush Intimidate lines, and we don't need to try to set up this clunky 4-card 12 when we could just play more offensive cards anyway. Uh, as far as the plan into Reinar, there isn't anything specific that we need to think about. We are just trying to deal more damage than he can block. We do need to be aware that Reinar plays defense reactions a lot of the time. So our pulpings are a little less good than they otherwise would be. Um, this doesn't mean that we should board pulpings out or that we shouldn't play them. Just when Reinar has a card in Arsenal, and if that card in Arsenal has been there for some time, consider that when you are deciding how to block or how to set up your turn, that you may need to worry about a sink below or a hold the line from Arsenal and your pulping could lose go again. And if you kept a five card hand to send this big pulping claw two for six line, uh, you may be interrupted at the start of that. But outside of that, Reinar is really trying to do the same thing that we are, which is set up a big blood rush turn and then 
deal a lot of damage. So we'll jump into the game and we'll see if we can deal with that. Uh, our hand is really good for blocking. It's really good for setting up agility, which we'll do now. It is really bad for playing out a turn cycle as we have three reds. We're really hoping to draw into a blue or we're hoping that Reinar is going to attack us with something that lets us block and he does oblige us. Um, I think this is fine. I think keeping the command and conquer is good. Reinar has plenty of equipment to block with and can use an agility very well. So not keeping the swing big to me seems fine. Having an agility means that we can think about how we are going to play out this hand, if we're going to try to put a card into Arsenal or not. I think that Wind Up CNC sounds fine. We push extra damage this turn compared to something like CNC Claw Discard Wind Up uh, to make my refresh our agility. Uh, just getting that four extra damage from playing the windup feels good, and we are putting Reinar in a position where he can get decent value by blocking the windup, and then hopefully not have uh, cards left to block with the CNC. Or we even just strip his hand, which is fine. Um, we also put ourselves into a position where we can. Go with the windup. If he sync blows or fate for scenes from Arsenal, then we just claw and Arsenal our CNC. I think this is a bad line. Um, I'm guessing that the follow up here is going to be command and conquer, and then we're going to discard our windup to make might and agility, which is setting up for a future turn, but gets us a three card nine this turn, which I think is not good. I think sending the windup first. Uh, to bait blocks and then follow up with the CNC would have been strong. Uh, that said, we do draw pretty well um, for taking advantage of this agility. With these being the blocks, I think blocking with Beast Within sounds pretty good. We take three, we get our windup back, we pitch our windup to attack with Mandible Claw, we play Cast Bones, and then we Arsenal Ascend Pack. Blocking with Bone Breaker, yes, it does get us our value. It also leaves us with blocking equipment to cover a Command and Conquer or a Send Packing. This is terrible, and I don't like it. Because um, I'm gonna make the same. Oh, this is even worse. Wow, we're really just compounding how bad this decision was. Um, yeah, I, I didn't care for that at all. We get no offensive value, we do not uh, threaten Reinar with anything, we don't pressure him at all, and we don't have an arsenal. So yeah, we have our agility now, all right, that's fine, um, but wow, that I, I strongly disagree with that line. I would have liked to have something in arsenal to really guarantee that we get to take advantage of this might and agility. Um, instead, yeah, we... we very little disruption at our disposal. Um, and we're kind of just priced into not blocking, which I wouldn't have wanted to block anyway. We're at 40. Savage Feast does not disrupt. Reinar still has an action point, so maybe he gets to CNC or send packing. We don't have an arsenal, so that doesn't matter. But uh, yeah, we're not going to block and well, yeah, I, I don't think that was correct. But we press on. We are going to play our Blood Rush. We are going to pitch our Pulping so that we are hanging on to either Disruption or Savage Feast. We would have liked to keep the Savage Feast if we could. It wasn't meant to be. 
And now we are in a position where we don't really have a good turn um, because we only had four cards and we had to pitch yellow instead of a blue. If we had a fifth card, then our turn is actually looking pretty okay. Um, as it is, we're gonna lead with send packing, very likely follow up with mandible claw by pitching pulping. We could think about getting a cross strap in there to attack with the pulping. This is a situation where if we had spring tunic instead of heart and cross strap, this is turn four. We would have our tunic counter available to send pack and follow up with pulping. Instead, our heart and cross strap looking really awkward when it is a one time use that provides a single resource we can use. We get to send send packing for 14. We are resilient to scaling flesh bag. Uh, the flesh bag here would get seven points of value, but we have a card in our hand that we're really interested to put into our arsenal. This is also a time when tunic would be really good because then we could tunic and claw. Um, which is just me continuing to harp on the fact that hardened cross trap is not as good as tunic. Uh, even against classes with access to Scowling Flesh Bag. Um, here we have to deal with a Send Packing for 7. I would like to keep my Pulping. So this seems like a pretty easy block with Bone Breaker, Leathers, and Savage Feast. Um, I guess this is fine too. We're just... Uh, yeah, this is fine. We're just in kind of a weird position now where we're going to play this pulping and we will have a an odd choice to make as far as are we just passing the turn or are we playing uh, attacking with Mandible Claw? And given pulping and that we want to continue to have go again, I think arsenal pul arsenaling pulping is fine. Uh, at the same time, it would have been really cool to be able to claw and arsenal. Man, these send packings are, uh, are very well timed. So, this is going to be hard to block. We're going to have to give up two cards. And we are going to get a pulping back that we cannot easily play because of this Blood Rush Bellow. Uh, we can play our pulping, we pitch our one of our blues and then we have a 50% chance to discard our blood rush which doesn't sound very good I think what we will likely do instead is block with savage feast a blue and a bone breaker make our might cover the scent packing then just play a three card blood rush and kind of hope for the best we still have our heart and cross strap uh, Reinar does not have flesh bag so we will get to claw and we are guaranteed to be able to follow that up with something. Definitely not the ideal situation, but this is kind of what we are priced into doing. Um, but we draw really well. So now the question is, are we using cross strap to play swing big and then arsenaling or discarding a wind up? or are we pitching the windup to play swing big? And I think pitching the windup is good. Making the agility is fine, but agility with a four card hand is a little worse than agility with a five card hand. And we've already made our might token from KO this turn, so windup loses some value there. I think this is totally great. Um, we do get blocked by a reckless swing. Reinar takes an extra point of damage from the beast within trigger. And we are going to see uh, what we can or can't catch Reinar with. It's just Claw for four. Looking at what we have in hand here, uh, I think we just say no blocks. On our turn, we swing big for nine and discard Agile lineup to make Might Agility. Arsenal our Wild Ride. It's 
instead we play a wild ride. This is not bad either, especially when we are very clearly the best flesh and blood player because we are so good at drawing blues and discarding reds. Uh, so perfect KO curve here. Mandible Claw for three, Swing Big for eight. The only reason I would not have suggested that line earlier is that we had a very poor chance at drawing a blue and discarding a red. Uh, at the same time, we only had one red that would work for this line if we had discarded the swing big and kept the agile wind up. This play doesn't happen because we are short one resource, again, from not having spring tunic. Um, but we get a bunch of cards from Ryanar. He gets a quick in, which is fine because he only has three cards and it is unlikely that he is going to be able to use the quick in, which we see here. Um, can we afford to get humbled this turn? A better question is, can we prevent ourselves from getting humbled? And the answer is no. So this is another turn where, unfortunately, we're kind of just priced into playing this Blood Rush. Uh, what we could do is take six, play Command and Conquer for seven, pitch Blood Rush, discard Wind Up, which would not make us a Might because we are humbled, but would make us an Agility, then Arsenal of Pulping. We could also block with nothing, play CNC for seven, pitch Wind Up, Arsenal Blood Rush and keep this pulping in hand. We take an intellect penalty, but we set up a stronger turn. I think the best line is going to be to take six and just play the Blood Rush. Even while humbled, we are guaranteed to hit on our Blood Rush, um, which is going to let us at minimum claw something. We still have Heart and Cross Strap available. Um, so looking pretty good here. We are going to open with Claw. I think following the Claw, we just bear fangs. We at least have a 50% chance to hit the uh, plus two power on bear fangs and maybe put a Command and Conquer into our arsenal, which feels really good. Um, we keep, this is the best situation we keep a command and conquer and also hit the discard trigger for bear fangs uh so putting run to one arsenaling a command and conquer we still have our flesh bag uh feeling really good about our position here but are hitting us with an intimidate trigger and playing savage beatdown which triggers intimidate again we don't need to block this uh, if we didn't want to. Going to one here, definitely a mistake because Ryanar has already played one Reckless Swing and we can pretty safely assume he has a second one. Um, notably, we don't know this. We saw him pitch a Reckless Swing early in the game, but then Sand Sketched Plan shuffled his deck, so we have no idea if that was a second Reckless Swing or if that was the same first Reckless Swing that we already saw. Uh, so we will want to block this Savage Beatdown with at least Scabskin Leathers to stay at three. I don't think we need to also block with Flesh Bag. And I think what we can do... Hoping I'm going to look at my Banish here. Because we have a blue in the Banish, I think we can also block with Wrecker Romp. We are going to get to play Wild Ride, pitch a blue, have a 50% at discarding Beast Within to draw a new card, we get to Mandible Claw, and at the very least we can Cross Trap play Command and Conquer. Um, so I think blocking for 5 here is great. We take 7, we go down to 6, and then we are giving ourselves a life buffer for both Reckless Swing from Reinar and our own Beast Within. If we do discard whatever we draw from the Wild Ride and keep Beast Within, as long as it is a 6 power attack, we can pitch Beast Within to Mandible Claw and then CNC. So we're still presenting um, 14 damage total 
which does just kill Rhinon. I've been checking my discard to see uh, what my lines are, what my chance of drawing a miss is. Playing it safe here, I think, is just incorrect. Uh, I think we do have a large enough lead over Rhinar, considering that we still even have Flesh Bag, that we should have just gone for it, and we have an out if we uh, draw, discard, a miss. Here, I would have liked to break Flesh um, Cross Strap. I think Sending Command and Conquer is still fine, but Arsenaling a Wild Ride feels really good. Again, five card hands with agility are much better than four card hands with agility. And um, I lost my train of thought. We still, we just, we have this cross trap. At a certain point, we need to use it. We want to get value from it. I think what we do here, again, we can keep our equipment, we can keep our flesh bag. We can block this for four by putting a blue and scab skins in front of it. Then we command and, um, Enlightened Strike for eight with go again. We give the E-Strike plus two. We have the agility to give it go again. Then we break cross strap and play pulping. We're doing 13 damage overall. Um, it is very unlikely that Reiner can survive that. More likely, Reinar gives us three cards to block the E-Strike. Then, even if we miss on the Pulping, it's still just five damage, and Reinar can't cover that. Instead, we draw a card, which I think is objectively wrong. The other problem with drawing a card is now we play Pulping. Reinar could have a hold the line in hand um, because we have drawn two cards this turn hold the line is on and blocks five to cover the pulling um, we miss anyway so what would have been a uh, very nice end to this game is instead not and the game continues we put ourselves into a position where I don't want to roll scabs because we are at six and if Ryanar has a strong four card hand then we get multiple intimidated and die. What I want to do instead is play Bear Fangs and overpitch by pitching Cast Bones then Beast Within, which feels bad, but considering that we only have one action point, I don't want to risk taking more damage to kind of just do nothing. Um, we're putting a Beast Within into Arsenal, which is marginally better than a three cost blue into arsenal, but still I don't want to take extra damage when I can't use the card that I am putting into my hand from Beast Within. We are, however, continuing to strip Reinar's hand, which is great. Um, we draw into a Pulping, we draw into an Enlightened Strike. So we should be able to close out this game uh, what we can do here is, I think, just take the same kind of line, which is block for three, go to five, E-strike for six, go again, break cross strap, play pulping, and just hope that it hits this time. Um, I don't think we need to get flesh bag here. This just seems objectively wrong. Um, I would like to have an E-Strike in order to keep going on this turn, but I suppose it is also fine to have put a Pulping into Arsenal. We are instead going to go for the four card Pulping line, um, drawing into something that will let us keep our turn going. At the same time, Pulping just has Dominate, and Reiner does not have a card in Arsenal to block uh, if it's a D-React. So we are going to pick up the win here. After kind of punting for a few turns, um, unfortunately, I mean, that does happen. I can, I can certainly, I as a player certainly love putting myself into positions where I'm trying very hard to lose games, and I think that happened this game. Played it very well up until the end, and then just never used our cross trap. 
despite that being what the card is here for, to enable us to do these three card, two length lines uh, that let us close out games. So definitely misplaying on my part. Uh, Suboptimal use of equipment for sure. Uh, but overall, I think blocks were largely fine. Generally good use of Blood Rush. We never got that big five card agility Blood Rush, but we did get plenty of decent three card Blood Rushes. Uh, still having Flesh Bag at the end of the game means that we probably lost value by not using it. At the same time, still having it gave us a certain level of protection throughout the entire game, which is nice. Conservative use of Flesh Bag in Brute Mirrors is really good, really strong. And 90% of the time, I have found that the player who uses their flesh bag first will lose the game. So I hope you enjoyed this game. I hope you learned something from it. If so, be sure to take that like button to Pound Town. My comments are always open for any questions or feedback. Again, if you've not already done so, please consider a YouTube subscription. It's free. It helps me out. But no matter what you do, catch me back here tomorrow for more daily fab gameplay. And until then, take care.